Bonjour, my name is Monsieur. In this video, I want to show you how you can replace the sky in two minutes. I'm going to show you three easy steps where I'm going to take this photo that I shot 13 years ago with the Canon 5D Mark II, my first professional camera, to get this result. Let's do it. This video that I'm about to show is actually one of the 10 projects that you're going to get in my sky replacement professional course that includes 112 skies. If you want to know more about this, you can click and watch this video or click the link below to see the video where I go in details about it. But for now, let me show you how in two minutes you can replace the sky. And this one is hard because it's a night sky. Stay until the end, you'll see. All right, so after the golden hour, after the sunset, comes the night. And night is kind of, a, it's, it's a different way of doing sky replacement. This is a photo I shot so many years ago with the Canon uh, 5D Mark II. Look at the date, uh, 2007. I shot this 13 years ago. Can you imagine? 13 years ago, ISO 100 f11, 2.5 second of exposure with my Canon 5D Mark II. It's one of my, you know, I started photography in 2015. So that's like, you know, from my beginnings. But I always love this photo. It's very distorted. So we're gonna have to do a bit more into Lightroom. And uh, then we're gonna use a, a little technique that's kind of cool for the sky replacement. So there we go. So I'm just gonna open the shadows a little bit and then I'm gonna bring down the highlights, not so much, because remember I wanna make the sky a bit, a little bit toward the white. So maybe add a bit, yeah, maybe add a little bit of uh, yellow. By adding a bit of yellow, what ha what's happening is that you wanna basically kind of neutralize the the sky, it's a little bit noisy because the Canon 5D Mark II was a noisy camera, even at 100 ISO, so I'm gonna denoise it. But now it's really very crooked, you know? And uh, so that's not good, that's not good. And also I don't like so much the white balance at the bottom. So I'm gonna click and drag, click and drag at the bottom, make it, make it a bit brighter. And I'm gonna add some blue just for the bottom. And you see, so I do a white balance for the top and I do a different white balance for the bottom. Okay, now we gotta make this straight. So the problem is that if you go here, I'm gonna remove chromatic aberration on the bad profile correction, which is good. And then I'm gonna go here. If I click on auto, it does something weird. Like this is straight, but like the, this is like weird, you know, it just doesn't look right to me. So I'm gonna, we're gonna to have to do this manually. So the way we do this manually is pretty easy. First, you use rotate and you just rotate the, a little bit. The idea is this, okay, you gotta, this is supposed to be straight and this is supposed to be straight. So what you do is you rotate it until this, and this is exactly, uh, I mean, you eyeball it, is exactly, uh, uh, you know, has the same percentage of rotation. So you see this is going like this, and this is going like this. So maybe, I think this one is a little more tilted than this one. You want the same tilt on both sides. So maybe, yeah, something like that. Once you got the best tilt on both sides, then you use the vertical, and you go left to make it straight. You do, and if you did it right, it's gonna go perfectly well. Uh, this is pretty good, this is pretty good. Okay, good. So now, let's uh, let's use this to, ref uh, let's go 16 by nine, because that's my favorite crop, but that's also what I work with galleries a lot. And I'm gonna crop here, crop there, voila, I'm on the photo. You know, it's a, it's a cool shot, but it's boring, there's no light. I see a sensor dust here. So while I see it, I'm gonna take it out. So now we're ready to get it into Photoshop and see if we can do some magic. So right click, edit, Photoshop 2020. So guys, this is actually some of the hardest guys to replace. So this is what I call a blue hour. So the blue hour is before the night. It's not pitch black yet. The sun has set, you can see the sun set there, but there's still some details in the sky. So let's go to our blue hour section here. And um, on this one, okay, let's try this sky here. So I'm gonna put this over here, use the shift key to uh, make it big enough. Okay, I'm gonna put this on top maybe, or I can even put it over the photo. You know, if you have like very, very, uh, a lot of sky and, so, and very little ground, sometimes you don't have to do the, you know, duplicate mirror that I've been showing you. You can just put this like this. But then the problem is this, if I go to multiply, check this out, it's gonna be so dark, so dark. So how can we do this? Well, we have a whole series of other blending modes here. Overlay is pretty good. 
I like overlay or soft light. Overlay, soft light, overlay, soft light. I think I'm going to go to overlay. I kind of like overlay. Wow, look at this. Okay. So now look how much it changed. So we still have the same issue because we have, you know, uh, look at this. We have, uh, we can see things here and things like this. That's fine. So I think on this one, what I want to do is because I've got a very clean selection here, I'm going to go here. I'm going to take W for the quick select tool, which is here. And I'm just, oh, sorry. You got to take the quick select tool here. And I'm just going to make a quick selection of the sky really quick. Okay, uh, so that selected that I don't like this, so I'm going to press Alt. So I just got a very rough selection of the sky. I'm going to invert that, select inverse. So now I got a quick selection of the bottom, but I'm missing this. So I want to add this, so I'm just going to brush here. And again, when you do this blurry technique, a rough selection is good enough. You know, you don't need something more precise. But I'll show you a cool technique. You can go to select and mask, make sure that view here is on overlay, and you can see that there is a what you see in red is not selected, okay? I, so what you can do is you can take the second tool and just brush all around here. It's going to improve the selection quite a lot, uh, okay? So now the bottom is, is quite well selected, and I'm going to go here on the sky, okay? So I have the bottom selected, and I'm going to go to Filter, I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then I'm going to Gaussian Blur, Check this out. Before the Gaussian blur, we can see all the, you know, all the sky here. After, boom, it's gone. I love that workflow. Okay, Command D to undo, and wow, it's really dramatic. It's really, but I can, I actually kind of like that sky even more than the one I tested earlier. To be honest, this was the kind of like a happy little accident. I love the red in the sky here. Uh, I think it's a little too saturated, but that's fine. We can go here. And you can add a U and saturation um, adjustment layer. And make sure you click here on this little box here so that it only affects that photo. Okay, I'm, you see here now, if I desaturate, it's gonna desaturate the sky. If I saturate, it's gonna saturate the sky. So I actually like it pretty much desa very desaturated, like not so much, but like this, maybe like this. I don't know, I kind of like that. It looks kind of cool. And then um, you can even make the sky brighter here, brighter or darker, brighter or darker. So maybe a bit darker and a bit of saturation. And so the trick is to use the overlay mode. That's the trick, you know, but you have to make the sky brighter. I really like this one. It actually turned out way better. And I think it's too much. It took out, you know what? I don't want, I want some saturation back. Give me my saturation back a little bit. Voila, voila. And, and don't forget, we're going to anyway take it up into uh, Lightroom. In fact, we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go to File. I'm not even going to try another sky because I'm in love. I am in love. The one I had done earlier was a different sky. And I think this one is good. Actually, I'm going to show you what I did earlier. So this is what I did earlier. So you can see I even added the moon and things. It's okay, but I think this is more dramatic. I love that. I love that. I think this is way better. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to open the shadows a bit. Oh, I love this. Uh, you know, maybe lower a little bit the highlights. And I think I'm going to add a bit of overall magenta. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Add a bit of contrast. And I'm going to desaturate it a little more because it's just... The thing is, when you add contrast of a contrast of a contrast, it just becomes very desaturated. So, But I love how it goes from warm to blue. I actually really like it. I want to add a little tiny more. I, I, I want it to be really dark. But I think it's awesome. I mean, this was the original photo, guys. I show you. This is the original photo, and this is the final photo. Uh, I think it's really, really cool. It's very strong. It's uh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I think it's not very straight. It's something I can maybe make it. I feel it's a little crooked here. So maybe just a tad like this, just a tad. Yeah, yes, I think that, that works a little bit better. And you know, you can. I can add like, uh, let's see if I can add texture and clarity. Nah, looks, I'm going to do a little minus clarity and add. Sometimes I like to do minus clarity and add a bit of texture. It does really well. One thing I might add on this photo, I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to put a big circle here. I'm going to invert it. And I just want to add even more yellow and magenta. And uh, yeah, it's a little too much. It's a little too much. So I'm just, you know, adding some colors here. 
and uh, I'm gonna feather it a lot and let's see before ah, it's a little too much too much surge you gotta stop it it's too much okay I'm not doing this anyhow I really like this shot really like this shot didn't expect it to come out so well